Good afternoon. This is Elaine Rector with the SKU Vault Seller Spotlight, where e-com entrepreneurs and business owners share advice. We talk about the crazy world of e-commerce, the challenges associated with it, and how to stay successful. Today I'm talking with Carrie Ann. So Carrie Ann, do you mind um, just telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, um, I guess to put it simply, I'd just be an e-commerce junkie. Um, but I guess kind of entails uh, e-commerce entrepreneur. So I do have a brand that I own for about four years now. Um, but I'll just say e-commerce manager. So I work in a, a very brand, not much the third parties or private labels, but um, bigger brands. And then uh, also like to invest in, in e-commerce businesses as well. So I guess that kind of sums it up. <laughs> Great. How did you get started in e-commerce? Um, so I've always been really entrepreneurial. Um, so my parents would tell you that ever since a young age, um, they would probably tell you the story of me, uh, selling school supplies out of my locker in fourth grade. Um, so I've always, I've always thought really like entrepreneurial. I've always had a really entrepreneurial mindset and, um, have always, uh, looked for opportunities and ways to solve problems. Um, and so it was actually in college that I got started in e-commerce. Um, I was, um, uh, in, well, I was in college and I just saw an opportunity, um, a product that actually was pretty simple, but um, was needed and uh, kind of looked into how do I make that a reality? And then um, started my own, um, um, my own domain and then uh, migrated over to Amazon as well. Um, and it kind of just, Blew up from there, and then I uh, I just fell in love with e-commerce and constantly wanted to learn. And um, you know, it's been it's been a whirlwind, but uh, definitely a, a, a awesome industry to be in. So, what do you find to be the most challenging part of e-commerce today? I think there's still um, a whole lot of unknowns and um, like still kind of catch up that we're trying to do. I know one, um, one thing I always deal with, uh, being an e-commerce manager is, um, kind of trying to make that business case and, and showing larger organizations how e-commerce is so different. Um, and to that point, even, um, you know, so now start with personally is thinking really strategically about e-commerce as I think everyone in e-commerce can agree. Um, it's really easy to be nimble and it's really easy to, um, you know, throw ads on a product that's doing well and, um, you know, once again, be nimble. And so um, one thing I, I struggle with is thinking, you know, let's say five, down, five years down the road because who knows what, you know, an Amazon.com is going to look like in five years. So I think that's still a struggle. It's just a lot of unknowns. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what do you think are some good strategies maybe to overcome that if you have any? Yeah, I think um, anytime you can give examples um, to show uh, some reasoning um, as far as the, you know, making a business case for how e-commerce can be so different from say brick and mortar. Um, I think it, kind of tailoring that down to maybe one or two examples um, is really helpful, at least how I've I've kind of found to be helpful. And then as far as strategically, that's kind of one where once again, I'm, I'm still learning, right. But, uh, I think you kind of just have to do the best you can <laughs> sure. and, uh, make some assumptions and, uh, definitely take into account, you know, how the landscape is today and anything uh, you think could be changing, but, um, that one's uh, definitely trickier. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, so this, Next part is your opportunity to promote someone else to the show. Um, what other top professionals in the e-com industry like yourself should be on the Skew Vault Seller Spotlight podcast? You know, there's so many great e-com people out there, and I think everyone in e-com could agree that um, whenever you talk to people in the space, it's like, it's, I always say it's like therapy to everyone. <laughs> it's uh, in the same world that a lot of people don't know about um, so it's kind of like talk shop and uh, I always say it's like therapy uh, but you know there, there's great ones um, some that I guess I definitely admire from a um, from a standpoint of um, they, they're really helping the industry in itself uh, learn and um, gather research and data um, some that come to mind would be like Russ Derringer with Cleveland Research Company um, you know I that is just such a valuable resource that I use. Um, once again, just, just knowing like what's going on in e-commerce, uh, Nick Weinheimer with Kenshu, um, Carmel Hagen's a great, um, uh, just 
awesome e-com boss, uh, but even outside of e-com, um, but has definitely thriving Amazon business. So those are three, I guess, um, that I would recommend, but there really are so many great people out there. Awesome. Yeah, I de definitely agree. And uh, we will circle back up after we, after the show here and uh, get some more information for me to reach out to those individuals too. Um, the, the last question, the most important question I have, uh, would you mind to tell us about the first real roadblock that you hit in e-commerce? Um, what did that look like and what did you do to overcome it? Yeah, that one I'm laughing because, um, you know, five years down the road, it's comical to think back on. But um, whenever I was first launching my, my first business, um, I mean, and this is truly so naive of me, but I was working overseas to manufacture my products, um, thought I was just, you know, doing a great job. I had sold everything I had on eBay to fund the first production run. Um, I had like three outfits in my closet. So, you know, I was like being really nitty gritty and I just thought I was, uh, was kind of killing it. And then um, whenever it was time that production was over to, to obviously ship the products, I, my complete naive self just thought they'd kind of show up like typical UPS at your door, um, <laughs> which as a lot of people would know, it, as, if the product's large enough, that's never gonna happen if you're importing. Really? Um, it, you can't afford it. <laughs> so I have no idea how the import process worked. And to say that was one of the most stressful times in my life, like, you know, at 20 or 21, I think I was 21 at the time. And I remember when I was looking into it, I kept seeing um, like, you know, if you import things wrong, you didn't have a, a six figure fine and you can go to jail. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't mess this up. <laughs> so um, fortunately I had some mentors at the time that had imported before and I got with them um, and I ended up having to take out a small loan from my dad to finish that uh, <laughs> cost to import that I guess I wasn't planning for it. But, um, but yeah, that was a huge roadblock is like, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And, um, you know, when, when a supplier is talking about stuff like FOB, you're like, what's a, what's FOB? And mm -hmm. you have to try to kind of learn as you go. And it's, it's, could be a scary world, you know, especially when you're kind of betting your life on it. Like I was with, uh, with that first production run. So, uh, it was, it was a very big roadblock, but I think how, how you, you know, you overcome stuff like that is once again, you have good mentors, good people you can, you know, ask questions to and um, kind of be a sounding board, um, sounding board too. So I think that's, that's probably the best, uh, best way to get over any really big roadblock. It's just having a really good um, mentor group or even just support system. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's definitely an important part. Well, so if you don't mind, um, tell us the best way to find you, um, your brand, maybe any promotions that you guys might have going on right now. Yeah, I think the best way to find me would just be LinkedIn. Um, so Carrie Ann Cash on. Uh, I think I'm probably one of the only Carrie Ann's and spelled like my name in the world anyways. So it's probably easy to find. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be a, that's a good resource. And then um, any of the brands I'm working for kind of, you know, always on promotion. So, um, I think LinkedIn for me personally would be the best way to connect for sure. Perfect. Great. Well, um, again, thank you so much for your time. And again, this is Elaine Rector with the SKU Vault Seller Spotlight. If you're an entrepreneur and working in e-commerce, I would love to have you on my show. In addition to find out how SKU Vault can elevate your e-commerce business through inventory management, feel free to message me now. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us and until next time, happy selling.